Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Growing Grounds Greenhouse. It's looking lusher than ever and AJ has seen amazing growth over the last three to four months during spring and summer. So I thought it would be a good idea to come back and let AJ give us an update of all of the plants. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> People really love me visiting your greenhouse and I, I know you've made a lot of changes. <laughs> I have. Specifically, you put a lot of plants on poles and you know I love growing things vertically. We love poles, so we love poles in this greenhouse. Yes, yes, I would love to dedicate a full video <laughs> to your vertical <laughs> poles today, if that's yeah, okay. Definitely, 100%. I can't awesome. wait to show you everything that's new. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we just start off Let's, straight away? Yeah, well, okay. I think one of the most impressive ones you're going to love. So let me show you. Yes. All right, let's head back down this way. You walk past it. I'm surprised it didn't catch your eye, oh, but it did catch my. It did catch your <laughs> eye. <laughs> Let me get it down. So you know the full name to this. I never do. You know me, Aussie, giving yes. everything shortened names. This is Philodendron Brandtianum. Yes, correct. I think so. I call it Brandy. You know, Brandy. for short. Oh, but hello. This, before we get started, this is Ronnie. My little girl, Ron Ron, Rue, whatever you want to call her, she's the love of my life. Mwah. She's actually um, my dog's dog. Yeah, I did that. I did that thing. I got Aww. my dog a dog. But she's the sweet, you goodest girl. You goodest girl. You goodest girl. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, this has probably been the most popular one in the greenhouse because it has just changed so dramatically. Yes. We're finally getting to a point where we're getting some mature leaves. And you just don't, people just don't grow this one um, to maturity. Like I mean, I'm trying at the moment. I also really love the, the back. Yeah. And I am trying at the moment. I'm just not having a good time getting it to it, size it up. It takes a so, while. It yeah. has, as you can see, it has taken me some time. Yeah. Like it, it, it kind of sized up quite quickly in the first phase. And then the second phase, it stayed here for quite some time. And I think that was during, during winter. So I couldn't so really nice. expect much. But as soon as I started really using, of course, growth technology, we started like amping up in size, nice. which is really good. Um, and yeah, it's just loving the grow pot. And this is probably one of the first that I've been able to show people how to extend. Oh yes, I did get that question yeah, the other day. Yeah, extend the grow verticals. So you basically, you take the, so grow vertical for any, if you're not familiar with grow vertical, grow vertical are these poles that come with a plastic backing mm -hmm. and the mesh at the front. It's yeah. a local company and you stock them over here as yeah, well. Yeah, right? I love them. So we've got the clear option over here and all, basically what you do is you just overlap them by one Correct. little thing. I just put the new Perfect. one on the inside of the old one and do the two zip ties at the top to connect them together and it's so seamless and that just Super gives easy. you. But the cool thing about that is like with what you guys have seen in the past with what Jan does is he um, cuts his poles in half obviously taking the more mature part, the top down to the bottom. Um, this is just giving you that connection so that once you've grown to the top you can take that mature part and start again. And Beautiful. Take but yeah, this has been the most impressive one yes. so far. That has done impressed. a lot of growing. Yes. But yeah, you should see this in some of, I've looked in some of our older videos. I'll, I'll try and find yeah, it. Yeah, we'll try I, and find I, it. I think we actually looked at it in our first video as well, which was only three months ago. So it would be good to see. And the, I, I, only I three months ago. I definitely do not remember these leaves being that No, so these are the new ones. That's but great. It's, it's doing very well. Mm, oh, she's letting us, she's not running away playing Hello. games with us today. Hello. Oh, wait. And last time I was here, you had a few poles hanging over here and that was correct. the part that I was the most impressed by as well because I love that you just hang them up there. Yes. It just makes it so easy for you to water them. It just drains straight through. You know, you yeah. don't have to worry about them sitting in any water. But yeah. since then, mm -hmm. that setup has escalated, right? I think you, you used <laughs> to have one section over here, oh, but now yeah. you have the entire wall. I really, really love that. That so, entire wall. So these ones, because they're the Grow Vertical Pros, of course, yes. they're only so long. So they're all at the same height here and you can only grow them to so... Do you want so me to get one down? <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> the hooks over that um, beam fit perfectly. So we'll for the oh, hooks that I've got. But this is one of my faves, Philodendron Moyoi or Moyoi. Mayo, well, yeah. Moyoi, I'll Mayoi? put all the names on screen for sure. Mayo, let's just call it Mayo. Yeah, Mayo. <laughs> I don't. I, I know this plant, but I don't see it being grown very often. No. So that's really interesting. And then, if you do see it being grown, a lot of people just grow it as a trailing plant, which you can do. But I mean, look at that leaf. Like you can't that's go past. That's beautiful. Oh, and, and it has nice. Um, yeah, really red. reddish veining as well. Beautiful. And I mean, really. it started off with this tiny leaf over here. Yeah. 
looks so little and tiny. Yeah, you guys know I love when the plant, I love starting my plants small and yeah. then seeing them transform it's just in, grown in so size well. and shape. This is really beautiful. I love, love this Definitely one. something I should consider. Now, oh yeah. A <laughs> couple of things I want to address because it's going to be the same for all of them. So let's get yes. it out of the way first. Yeah. So you're using 14 centimeter pots. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. And same as me, like I usually use 14 centimeter mm. pots as well. So they're quite small. Oh yeah. But, but they fit these poles perfectly. Yes. And technically, as you say all the time, the pole is an extension of the pot. So mm. even though that's a 140 mil pot, you've just got all of this space for the root system. So you can really be growing in this pot for quite some time. Nice. Before you up upgrade. And you put aeroid mix in here, mm -hmm. and your aeroid mix is yep. basically... So, well, look, it's basically the same as yours, but if I can't get access to all the mediums, then I am using majority of the time uh, cocoa chunks, um, orca bark, vermiculite, uh, cocoa pith, and perlite and they are my five favorite things to use nice. in a mix so i do love pumice as well i know pumice isn't pumice, so easy to get your hands yeah, on at times pumice is a bit I tricky also i don't use pumice because i hang these uh, pumice is much heavier than weighty. perlite right if you're just yeah. sitting it on the ground in a pot then de pumice is a definite because you want to make sure it's like sweet that's a good down. That's a very good tip. And in the poll, I see that this one is cocoa chips. Yes, I know. You did Sometimes a video you use recently. moss. I, I know. So, yeah. I mean, I did that experiment comparing moss with cocoa mm -hmm. chips. I personally have a better growing experience with moss. And I mean, I've done so, it for three years. What's points, your. I have a few points yeah, about that. Please. So, to be successful with growing with cocoa chips, you definitely need to pack it in that poll. You need to make sure that you're using mm. like a stick or something to really pack it in because then you're gonna be able to create those micro humidity pockets. If you're leaving it too airy in the pole, it's definitely not going to grow as well as sphagnum moss. Okay, I think that's what I, probably my problem because I literally just flaked just it, in it in there. It had like I a saw lot of it and I was like, and you're like no, <laughs> pack it in, pack it. Okay, that makes sense because- It makes a I, big difference. I had yeah. a, my cocoa chips dried out much quicker than the mm -hmm. moss. It was mm -hmm. just really messy when I watered it because I just, there were so many gaps and so on. Yeah. So maybe I should have done so that. If you really pack it in, <laughs> almost so that the mesh is almost like bulging a little yes. bit, then you know you've got enough in there and it will grow really, really well. Perfect. Really well. But you do have some on moss as well. Let yeah. me maybe take one down on moss over here. So how do you decide when you use moss, when do you use cocoa chips? Is it just based on what you've got available then so, and there? So yes, sometimes it's based on what, on I've, what I've got available. Sometimes it's due to the fact that I know that something doesn't need, if something just doesn't need the denseness of sphagnum moss. This guy, for example, you can see he's a bit yellowing. He's a bit dry. First of all, I didn't pack enough sphagnum in there. You can see that's concave. It's not got enough in mm. there to stay moist for long enough. And secondly, you can see it's kind of not growing. It's not growing bigger leaves. Yes. I wonder why it's because it's drying out too quick. Okay. A big problem that people have and that they come to me a lot about is like, AJ, I can't get my leaves to get any bigger. I don't know why. I said, are you letting it be dry? Yes. Well, then that's the problem. Yeah. They usually need to keep a little bit of moisture, especially when they're smaller. If you're not keeping them moist enough, they won't gain, gain that size. Once they've gained the size like yours has, you don't have mm -hmm. to worry about them drying out as much. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Definitely when they're a bit smaller. I can definitely second that as well. Like once mm -hmm. a plant reaches a certain level of maturity, I feel it's so much, uh, it's less fussy with everything, oh, yeah. watering, uh, and light, it's, it's everything. Used it's to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just feel like it's like a grown ass plant at this stage and it can handle a little bit <laughs> of challenges. Whereas if it's a little baby, it needs more babysitting, yeah, that's how right? I like, treated when I was a teenager. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, so it's a, it's a tetrasperma. Tetrasperma, right? yep. yes. It needs to be fertilized a little bit more so I can get a bit more Is size that why going. it's light in color as yeah, well? Yeah, it needs yeah. a little bit more fertilizer. Yeah. I, uh, one thing about the, um, what I found about the cocoa chips is they do require to be fertilized a little bit more often. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know all the science behind it, but with the cocoa chunks, they don't tend to hold a lot of... Um, I think they absorb, so what Tim from Grow Vertical mm. told me is that the cocoa chips in itself absorb a lot of magnesium and, and calcium. And they don't let it go. So, and they, yeah, mm. so they keep it in there. Yeah, which, so you do need to fertilize a bit more yeah. often, but like, I mean, if you're fertilizing every water anyway, you're fine. It's no problem. Easy. Like if you're adding it to your magical dripping bottles, yeah. which you already are, yeah. you'll never have that issue. So Beautiful. Yeah, and let's yeah. have a look at the one next to it as well, because I'm actually growing this one too. Yeah. But you cute, seem to have a little bit baby. more success so far. I've been growing it for a long time. I'm yes. not going to lie. This okay. has been a project 
in trying to keep it happy. It's gone through processes of being good and then unhappy and going, give me some weird leaves and twisting and turning. But we're now at a point where it's just starting, starting to give me some more um, Look at Mickey color. Mouse lobes. And it's lightning in color, which means that it's going to hopefully start transitioning to more of a mature form soon. Mm, beautiful. It and definitely I mean, this needs is a in repot. a tiny pot, right? I mean. <laughs> but if you flip it, you'll see why. It's still doing good because most of its root system is in, in here. So I will give it a bigger pot. Yeah. 100% I'm going to give it a bigger pot. Um, I've just, I've just not had time. Yeah. Now, I, <laughs> I don't use the clear grow vertical supports. I love the fact that you can see the roots, yeah. but I don't necessarily want it to have more algae than it absolutely has to. I mean, I get algae build up at the front because these poles stay moist for so much longer. So algae has Sorry. a good time. Interesting fact. Yes. Algae occurs when there's enough light and moisture. Yes. So if you're using a pole that's not clear, you will have less algae issues. Yes. Same with clear pots. If you don't use clear pots, you have less algae issues. Yes. I mean, I put my clear pots into decorative planters because they give them support. Yeah. But also they give them darkness and yes, roots yeah. seek darkness and usually, you can check, right? Yeah, so, but that's the reason why I don't like the see-through ones. But they're great for, if you're, if you want to spray well, on the roots, if, if you're... You see, look how tiny the leaves were when I started. Yeah. I mean, some are a bit gone like they've been used so they need to come off but um they were so small yes so i used the clear because i wanted to keep an eye on what was yes. going on yes if you're somebody who doesn't have a good time taking care of roots or um you're you're a bit of a helicopter parent and you rather check in then the clear ones are great but i get that a lot people ask me if the algae is harmful and no. whether the algae is competing with my no. plant for nutrients. The only thing I think that the algae does that is in any sort of way negative, which really actually isn't, is that it can give a film to the sphagnum, which then in turn can take it a little bit longer to dry out. Other than that... But that's a good thing. Most people struggle with the pole drying out too quickly. Other than that, you Like won't. it gets a bit slimy, right? But even yours, even your poles, you won't have algae too far up because your poles dry out quite a lot yes, at the top. Yes, because I have more, yeah. um, I have, I have more, more aeration, surface larger area. surface area. Yeah. So definitely, I noticed that with the grow vertical poles, I water them less frequently. Mm -hmm. They're having an easier time staying moist, but you see more algae. This one we looked at so the other time as well. We did. I yes. just cut it back then yes and that was what about two three months it ago. was in september this so is, three months so ago, this yes. has been a little bit slow off the bat but i cut this because what i mean another good thing with any kind of grow pole like this with sphagnum or any medium is it's not just for the plants to look pretty you can propagate on them too yes. and you don't have to do anything so this is a bit dry right now um and hence the reason why some of the other ones have gotten a bit small is very dry up there so i am putting a misting system mm. up i chopped these a couple of months ago and so what you can do is when you've cut them on the pole look at that it's grown its own new plant new leaf to the new plant yeah is right there how cute is that oh, and there's more Little here leaf. like they're everywhere there's new leaves everywhere so that's a whole new plant there so now that that's got a leaf i'm going to wait for one more leaf each one's going to have two leaves off their little nodes and then, yeah, this top section I'm going to grow on. Then I will take it off, put them in their own pots with their own little mini gray verticals, and they're good to go. Beautiful. Like, they're ready. No loss. I have not lost anything. This is 100% success when you propagate on these And things. I can second that as well. If, every time I cut a plant and it's already rooted in the moss pole, that's like the security. Oh, my God, it's so good. Like, like why? Perfect. Why? Okay, I know people love propagating water. I still do to this day. Very rarely, but I still do yeah. to this day. My odds and bobs are on my windowsill. But if you can cut everything on here and then propagate it and not have to do a thing, why on the earth Easy. would you not? And like, it's not even just propagate. I mean, you propagate because you're a store owner. You know, you obviously yeah. want to create stock for yourself. But I propagate usually to make my plants look really lush. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. imagine over here, you just have one vine with yeah. like a few leaves. Now well, you base. actually have like eight or nine yeah. or ten, whatever. So and it's going to get so nice and lush. had multiple on this pole. Yes. So the, these ones that are down the bottom are going to stay on the pole. Beautiful. I'll pick out the couple I propagated. I'll bring this guy back down and we'll be five on there growing at the same rate. So, win, 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 win. That's it. it. All across the board. That's it. Yeah, so this one is also on a on a fatty long. Yes. And really the main benefit of this one, and I mean, you can, you actually have a lot of flexibility using these grow vertical poles as well. But, yeah. So the main benefit of this is that you just create more room for roots, right? Yes. And I mean, giving your plant enough room to grow roots is essential if you want it to mature. So yes. 
you're basically giving it a lot of room vertically mm -hmm. rather than actually giving it a large pot because it's just in a 20 centimeter pot. Yeah, and that's the biggest pot I'll ever go in. I won't go yes. anything bigger okay. than that. So that, that's it. So the idea is I've got three plants on that one pole. They'll all get to the top at a majority of the, the close at the same time. Um, depending on my next greenhouse, with yet, which yes, I'm actually going to build a second greenhouse outside, <laughs> a big one. Don't worry, we'll yeah. be there. Oh yeah, it's happening. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, any Aussies? See. Any Aussies? Go buy my stuff so I can buy another, <laughs> buy another greenhouse. And you can, you can still see roots <laughs> yeah, coming through that. here as well. So Babe, it's starting to get there. It's definitely Bear working. Mind, I only attached this to the pole when it was like half the height of what yes. it is now. So for older nodes that haven't rooted into anything to root, is actually like you've got a 50-50 kind of chance there. So it's, if you're rooting in, you're doing something good. So Beautiful. And um, this is like probably the nicest variegated yeah, I cannot pronounce Stendiliana. Stendiliana, yeah. yeah. There was a couple of manky leaves, but that's just because of the transfer and it was getting yeah. used to like being on here. But it's growing out really nice. That now. is beautiful. Like yeah. I, I've had a half half one yeah. and it just died. It, like it just did not want they, to leave. They can melt. <laughs> FYI, Monstera. Even though the hell is the hardy as hell, these can melt in like a second because they're variegated. A hundred percent. If you're going to use Grow Vertical with Monstera, use cocoa chips. Okay. Good to know. 100%. You wouldn't, you, there's no need to to do um, sphagnum moss. There's just yeah. no need. I mean, sphagnum moss. I mean, you can. You can. But for my situation, being in a humid environment, there's no point. Yes. Specifically because you are growing in perfect conditions anyway. You don't really need to give them Pretty much. And they've got such thick extra. roots. Like the, the, um, the chips are enough. Beautiful. If they've got thinner roots, definitely sphagnum. So, Beautiful. thinner roots, let's talk about thinner roots, mm. my favourite. Oh god, let's not even talk about this. Actually, know, yeah, let's not... talk about this one. This is so, an experiment. There, yeah, because interesting, because if we're going off your theory, mm. and you know, a Monstera has thick roots, give it cocoa chips, I would always give a varicosum sphagnum moss, because it has the shitty, tiny little fluffy so, roots like yeah, these roots is, are not exciting this is just starting to root in oh, yeah. like it's hard to show we'll show you a bit closer on the camera but yeah, if you pull that right. away a little bit so the Ooh, tiniest i don't want to pull it too root, much there got the tiniest little area where it's just starting to go in now this was an experiment it's a it's a uh tissue culture next to a non-tissue culture mm, uh, i love that awesome. so this which one is the tissue culture this is tissue culture this is not tissue culture oh. you can tell that the tissue culture has taken the light up yes. here better the non-tc has bleached a lot and has not enjoyed the um also the petiole and the fluff is a lot more i don't know what you what's the terminology for that but it's, it's hair yeah it's obvious to a normal varicosum whereas the tc very little that's interesting. I we'll mean, it's see. still really early days. Oh, you it's really so got to give this like days. another year they or so, so But also, you'll notice is the um, non TC has reshooted all these little baby shoots. Mine, every time Crazy. I cut my varicosum, it reshoots Fun. in so many different nodes. So many little like, babies. I have propagated so many. Hang on, I'll show you something. Yeah. <laughs> Here's something <laughs> up a <laughs> earlier, about a year earlier. Yeah. So I brought a few of my plants down to AJ's because I'm just running out of space. So I needed to get rid of all my duplicates. But this is also non TC varicosum. Yeah. And what happened as well, like I had a one cutting. Yeah. And I grew it on a grow vertical yeah. pole. I cut it in four bits. I planted four on here. So now I have four cuttings on here, making it nice and lush. Because varicosums have very large internodal spacing. Huge. Like if I just have like one, it would actually large. be nice to see if the TC varicosum also has really large internodal spacing. I suppose time will tell, but the non-TC so, one so has huge internodal spacing. Yeah. If I just have one growing on here, it would look really empty. But because all of these smaller ones are filling mm. in the gaps, so with four plants, this is finally starting to look nice and lush. Yes. But I love me some moss for my varicosums. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to lack in there. Yeah. I might even change it over at some yeah. point. But uh, that's all I, for, for, for once, that's actually all I had at the time. Oh, fair enough. This is my favorite. Yarn stole, stole my spotlight and grew one bigger. Yes. <laughs> Yarn. I think it's a lot of people's favorite. It's like one, it's like a really like OG philodendron philodendron melana chrysum yes or, or melana crisis as i call it milo baby <laughs> you milo have baby. a lot of these you really love them right <laughs> you can never have enough milo in your life 
<laughs> I think I, I've, I have a love hate relationship. You have enough Milo in your life. Yeah. I freaking love this one. This one has taken it. It has taken the sun hardcore. Mm. It has. It's bleached, baby. It's sun bleached, but I don't care. It's still beautiful. It might even have a little bit of spider mite. May maybe. That looks healthy. That's good. It looks healthy. It's just very um, sun bleached. A lot of people struggling mm -hmm. getting Milanos to size up, including me. It's taking three years and it's still, like it's finally getting a decent size. But if I compare it to my Splendid, my Glorious, my Vericosum, like all of the other plants that I grow in very similar um, circumstances, I have had them for a similar amount of time, yeah. but it's taking so long. Do you know why? Why? Humidity. Yeah, okay. Humidity. I'm going to just you admit it. humidity is the main thing? 100%. You probably know the big one's not in here. The big one that I have on the big fatty long totem. Yeah. Um, that is because it was just getting too hot in here and not enough moisture. And it just wasn't sizing up. So I, I really 100% am sure. Because <laughs> always that. Well, 99.9% .9 sure <laughs> yeah. that it Somebody is down to humidity. I know. Someone's going to <laughs> come for me. It's fine. That it comes down to humidity. And I think okay. that's why it took so long for yours to get to that point. Because it eventually will get to uh, maturity. Every plant will. But how quickly it depends yes. on humidity. Okay. I think with humidity, it sizes up real quick. Because I have had a lot of um, people I message love me. Yours. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of people message me saying it's probably a light thing. Like they love a lot of light, but then your your yours is getting too much light, Girl, so it's actually getting orange. a bit bleached. Right? <laughs> then enough, other people to told me. Oh, because it's a really dark leaf, it likes darkness or it likes the shade. Like you're giving it too much light, that's why it's not maturing. So I tried no. both and neither of them really no. made a difference. It, it so, genuinely comes down to okay. humidity. I Which is hard to get indoors, right? Oh God, I mean, yeah. that is your number one advantage over yes, here. Yes, I'm lucky. Yeah. And, but even in here when it's hot, humidity I can't create just from the humidifier. I need to have a mister in here to start creating the humidity because it just gets sucked out of the air so quickly. Mm. So with the mister on, which I don't have yet, that's to come. Um, that'll help create, that'll help create um, constant humidity and higher humidity. That's the biggest problem. And moisten the poles at the yes, same time, right? Which, which is so going to make a huge difference. So you want to set up misters to yeah. kind of mist from, from the top, yeah. so they're basically always moist. Always moist. Perfect. Yeah, I can't wait. Well, we'll be back. back. We'll be Ooh. back when you do it. Oh Can my we God. talk about how much I love this plant? Oh, I know. Roots are like poking up at the top. It's just so happy. They're poking out all over the place. Yeah, sure. They've Maybe pushed you away from the pole even. Show them. Let's have a look. Can you see the... Sort of leaves. Yeah, look at the crazy roots it has grown. Like yeah. go growing up as well. So I noticed that with a couple of my plants. I noticed that with my if billy. If your roots I are growing up, yeah? you're doing something right. Right? Yeah. Oh. It means it's like getting mature fast. Nice. Because okay. it's trying to anchor itself. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. But I've only noticed it with my Billy. I noticed it with my Ataba Proenzi. And then I, I just got one of these. <laughs> so I'm excited after we had after we did the last video. This has gained yeah. three leaves since the last video. Yes. And it's just not stopping. Like this one came out last week. It's hardening off. It's already starting to like get ready for the next one. It just is not stopping. The only thing I regret with this is not putting it on a fatter pole. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you can technically always just yeah. give it, like you could give it a... Oh, look, its internodes yeah. are so short. I'm just going to leave it on this yeah. and just give it another pole at the top just to stretch out, even though the pole will be quite long. But to be honest, it's doing so well and I'm so happy with it. Beautiful. Finally, I've got one as big as yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you got one that's much bigger than mine. Yeah, so actually, yeah. Mine is I a do. tiny baby. I only got yeah. it last week. Definitely inspired by the last video we filmed yeah, over it's here. It's definitely but one that you're gonna love growing. Yes, I'm really yeah. excited. And thanks for clarifying why the roots grow up. Actually, there was a question somebody asked yeah. me the other day. What I was chatting to a Queensland grower, a really old school Queensland grower, and he said if you've got plants that are growing roots vigorously up a tree he clearly doesn't grow and grow verticals he's in a place where he can just grow on a tree which is crazy Beautiful. to me but um he said if the the roots are, uh, are tapering up the tree real quick you know that it is um a beautiful grower and it's just anchoring itself to really grow like crazy perfect so it's not it's not a competition but no. i win it is a competition. It is. Yeah. What are you it's, talking no, about? It's, not. it's always competition. No. Yeah. But yours is much lusher, so I. I well, I've got multi plants. Yes, and that's what I regret. Some. So what I, 
I'm usually pretty good with that. I'm mm -hmm. usually, when I get a new plant, I propagate it first to create multiples and then I start growing it up a pole. But it's but, also nice to yeah. just do it yourself, like slowly, if you really want like, yeah, to Yeah, but see it. with that one, I actually did grew up a moss pole. Now it's just one vine. I should have probably cut it earlier, propagated and then let three. multiple plants growing up because I like that lush look. Yeah, so three is probably a bit much for a pro pole. It is going to be really claustrophobic in here soon because it's just sized up so quickly. Um, but it's going to look amazing mm. on a big bowl. Yes. And that's one thing that I'm going to test with this specific one is transferring from a pro pole to a fatty long without taking it off. Oh. Yeah. So I've done that with my with my dubia, with my with the bottom part of that mm. dubia over mm. there. So the the I, I wanted to this is the top part. You know, normally I take the top yeah. part and I keep growing the top part. I actually wanted to keep growing the bottom part. I do it, I have an experiment, it's coming. Yeah. But I then took the bottom part and I also converted it to grow vertical pole because mm. I figured it needs more room for yeah. roots. And it, And guiding the roots in the right direction. Yes, too. and it is doing amazing things yeah, at the I'm moment. So I hope <laughs> I'll 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 film it for you in a yeah. couple of weeks time i just wanted to grow another couple of leaves yeah because it really started kicking off now and it's pushing out a leaf a week like it's crazy um See, so i'm excited verticals are good. yes and the good thing is like if you haven't started on a grow vertical because not i don't haven't i don't have that many grow vertical poles most mm. of mine are on the open poles but whenever i want to i could just take the mesh cut it open and then replace yeah, the back that with is plastic the so epic you can do you it can do. anytime so if you're like, you know, strap for cash, if you if you want to make some stuff yourself, do it. Yeah. But it's always transferable. These are really hard. No, but these ones are nice because they're also recycled. Freaking plastic. love them. Yeah. yeah. So this this specific colour, even though it's a bit grey, um, a bit blue. I like it. Blue, it's like blue, greenish. Well, it's meant to be the eco green, but because you can imagine if it's curbside recycling, mm. they, it's going to come out a different colour every time. It's never going to be the same. So this one's a little bit blue, but usually they're a bit green, but it doesn't matter because they're 100% recycled. Yeah. Last couple of ones. <laughs> AJ, what do you yes, have? Yes, I have Syngonium Goldie. Mm. Super basic, but oh my god, what an impactful... <laughs> <laughs> you say basic like it's so a, something basic. negative. I love it. No, but I, I love I, me I some know, basic plants. It, that's what I'm saying. It's fucking basic, but it's... Look at it. It definitely adds color, right? Like, well, I purposely used black pot and a black backing on this because I knew I was going to use cocoa mm. chips for a syngonium because their root system is insane. So I knew I wouldn't have to worry about a clear backing. But I mean, look at it. It looks like it's floating. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, baby. It is pretty. <laughs> I just have something with yellow. I don't know. Like, I well, just... I think this is comically yellow, so you know it's not sick. Yes. So I think it's like because it's to an extreme gold color, but I'm really excited to see it mature and how it's going to look. Yes. It's going to be so pretty. Is it going to be tri? I think so. Lobe, I think so. Like tri lobe, I yeah. think that's what you call it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting it's to look see. Look cool. I love it. It's going really, really well. It would really, be amazing well. if that would have like dark green variegation. That would that's be sick. That's what's called mojito. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have. Uh, Philodendron rugosum. We showed My you that last time God. as well, but I just wanted to show you a couple of things. First of all, I mean, it's taken so well to that pole. You can see all of these roots going in, and then you can see the roots in the back as well. Yeah. But also, just look how crazy it has sized up. Like, the stem has gotten so thick, and the internodal spacing has gotten much shorter as it mm. uh, matures yeah. as well. So that's another sign of maturing as well. Oh, like yeah. I've noticed that definitely the internodal spacing reduces. Mm -hmm. The stem is getting thicker. The thicker your stem, the more potential for your leaf. Or like the larger your I, leaf I just, usually. I don't know how big this is going to get, but I mean, yes. look at the new leaf coming out. It, the new leaf you, looks huge compared to the ones that you have here. Oh, so yeah, it's going to be exciting to I've see. I've never seen like a really, really mature one of these. I, I just never ever. see people growing it on a pole yeah. in general. I don't know. I I don't know what it is. I think I've just, I like to pick things that I don't see people growing just to see the differences. But yeah. this has been Good one on of you. my favorites. I yes. freaking love it. I'm currently on the hunt for the other form. I saw that. Yeah. I hate that one. I love Damn. it. Yeah, but you say that now and you wait till I grow it. <laughs> You'll be like, okay. I want yeah. some, I want some. But that's another <laughs> thing. Like, I mean, tastes are different. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. all need to grow the same. Some, well, look. some plants just I look at them, they don't give me anything. And people say the same about my plants. Mm. People have questioned why I grow certain plants. Like, like, so like the Monsieur Adansonii, that's something I would grow. But I would grow because it just how spectacular it looks. That's like my favourite of I all know, time. Like, you what are you talking about? I know, but like a lot of people don't like it because of the way they've grown in the past. But mm. when you grow it on a pole, 
Okay, so this is the beast. Um, a lot of people, I, I mean, I know a lot of people aren't really into syngoniums and that's fine. And I know a lot of people will look at this and go, oh, why, it doesn't even look that good. Okay, there's two reasons why. First of all. <laughs> First of all, you've got bad all, taste. <laughs> I've got lighting from above. So the leaves are facing up, which if this was in your home, it wouldn't be. It'd mm. be facing down. Like we all know that, right? We've spoken about that before. Yeah. So yes, it doesn't look that impressive, but there's a reason I'm growing it. I want to get a maturity. I want to get it to maturity. I want it to load, which is, it's going to start doing, I need to actually extend the pole one more time, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not going to do it anyway. <laughs> But I did it because I wanted to show people what it's like to extend three poles and also to see the root system with um, cocoa chips. Because yes. everyone's like, oh, cocoa chips. This is what I'm trying to prove to you guys. They okay. work. Are we ready? Yes. So this has been on the pole for four, five months. Five months. Da, 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 da. Da, da. So this is what I mean. Syngoniums don't need sphagnum so much. The cocoa chips are more than enough. As long as you pack them in, I always say pack them in yep. as Lesson much learned. as you can. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, I was watching your video I'm like, and Ugh. I was like, oh damn. But you know, it is true though. They will, it is a little bit slower than sphagnum if you're not fertilizing as often. Mm -hmm. So that is true. But you were right, you weren't wrong. Um, but yes, as you can see, it is freaking loving the cocoa chips. See what three pro grow verticals um, are like on top of each other. So are you telling huge. me? Are you telling me that the extension is only held together by two zip ties? Two zip ties each. As you okay, can see, so you if don't you were do... to let go, if you were to let go, it just stands because it is thinner than the pot. If you were to use a fatty long, it would be very rigid. This is a little bit mm -hmm. flimsy. Yeah, I'm not okay. gonna lie, but I tie them to the pole. If you were to do this, you could put a stake inside, yes, that's which is what, what I do. you do, yep. okay. and that would be fine. That would be totally fine. And you would use a really heavy pot to kind of anchor it down a bit. Yep. Watch out. This is where she's at. Her name is Kylie. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just Kylie. <laughs> Spinning around, move out of her way. I know you're feeling it because you like it like this. Oh, look at the flowers <laughs> flying out. Stop, stop, She's stop, dumb. no. Alrighty, I know that <laughs> we already said twice that this is the last plant, but there's, I just saw something else. There's just so much to explore. We already what? spent two hours in this greenhouse what and they're still exploring new things. Oh, I do have this on a pole inside. <laughs> oh, like it's just dying for a pole. One day. What's happening? So, okay, so two things. Today, I actually just topped it. If you turn it around, you'll be able to see. See here? So this is actually online for sale for uh, $18.50 um, because it's a double plant. Let me repeat, it's double planted. So there's a really highly variegated baby at the front and there's a less variegated mama plant at the back. But it was shooting three green straight green leaves. I made the executive decision to chop the tip off of the more greener side but i pretty much chopped it off because it was going quite green uh it does really really well with chopping back to um, encourage variegation if you actually turn it to the side here where the active node is is on this side which is actually quite close to where that variegation is going through the stem now i have heard i don't know if it's 100 percent a fact but i've heard that if the active node pushes out quite close to or on top of a very variegated patch on the stem you're more likely to get a quite variegated leaf Makes sense. It, it pretty much makes sense, but I can't prove that clearly. Yeah. With all my experience in growing things that are variegated, it seems to always work out that way. Okay. So fingers crossed, everyone, crush fingers. <laughs> It'll grow more variegation, did which will make this plant even more worth the $1,800 that it is. <laughs> Fun fact, did you know that in, in Germany we don't cross fingers, we... Punch people. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, but we, we like, we press our thumb for good, good luck. We're like, oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> one more plant. This, but, uh, this is the last one. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever the last one for this video. Okay. okay. And there's many more we can talk. Oh, I just saw another one. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to say <laughs> That's what That's it. Is. Okay. Executive it. decision. Okay. Last one. This is it. So, what have we got? Big ears. It's got a name that's got many numbers in it that I don't it's like remember. Philodendron 686 or something like that. But <laughs> I always used to say my phone number and then realised I can't do that anymore <laughs> you do on not. social media because people start calling me. It's Philodendron me. I fourth. <laughs> <no. laughs> so this is one where I did a bit of an experiment. I started, I started it on sphagnum, 
realized it wasn't liking the intense moisture so much. And then I didn't, at the time, I actually didn't have um, a very uh, good fibrous uh, cocoa chunks at the time. So I, I mixed cocoa pith and chunks. Uh, let's just say I won't be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, let me show you. See all this fine stuff in the back? Mm. If I now go like this, can you see that? If I now go like this, you stay right there. <laughs> you can already see it. It's like... Merry Christmas! Yes! <laughs> it's snowing! <laughs> and you have a half closed pole. Imagine you have this in an open pole. People ask me, Doesn't can I work. use cocoa peat? Can I use no. peat moss? We don't use peat moss no. full stop. But um, cocoa, cocoa pith? Cocoa pith. Or cocoa. Well, we, it's meant to be called cocoa pith, as far as I understand. But well, they that's call not it, how it's spelled. <laughs> no, no, it should be called cocoa pith. But they call it cocoa peat sometimes, I think, because. It's easier for people to recognize that it's similar that to the same. Too, yes. Yeah. Yes. But it's made with coconuts. So yes. it's okay. Coconuts. Very okay. But this is doing really well now. Even though this is a really gross fallout y mix, it's still doing the job. So don't get me wrong, it still works. It's just very messy. It's okay because you're in a greenhouse over oh, here. You can outside. just go around with the hose, and, see, but inside that would be a nightmare. It would be gross. Yeah. It would be very gross. Yeah. But it's doing well. It's just popped out. It had this beautiful leaf. Then I popped out this beautiful leaf, which is really giving um, purpose to its nickname, Big Ears. Because look at yes. those big, droopy ears. <laughs> I was never a big fan of this plant, actually, when I just saw it oh. online. This is, I think this is the first time I really see it it's so decent good. sized in real life. This is beautiful. Mm. Big Ears is a quite common plant and it's, it's quite more, readily available. Yeah, it's, more right? affordable. it's more affordable. And it's like version a version of a UPI. Yeah, it's like a affordable version of the UPI over here, which <laughs> can grow really large though, right? Like these can grow huge. So yeah. are you going to pop that on a pole? Well, yeah. Well, uh, well, um, I have one on a pole. It's inside. It's growing in the tent. It's a bit hidden at the moment. This one's actually for sale, guys. This oh. one's actually available to purchase. Are you telling me we need to stop? She's we so stop, sis. You look exactly like cute. Dobby. I am Dobby. What are you talking about? You are Dobby. Dobby I'm is Dobby a free Dobby reincarnated. Elf. Free. Dobby is free. Yeah, I gave her a sock when I first got her, so she can leave whenever <laughs> she wants. <laughs> but you don't want to leave, right? Because this is where you get food. Well, thanks for having us again. Thank you for coming. We love like being always. here. Um, I love being here, and I think I people enjoy the videos as well. Thank you for showing us the polls, the new setup over here. Yeah. I really appreciate it. AJ, people yes. can find you on social media, yes. Instagram, Instagram's YouTube. Instagram is our main, my main hub. So yep. At Growing Grounds. YouTube, at Growing Grounds or at Growing Grounds Australia, either or, they all come to me. Nice. Um, yeah. And I'll link everything in the yes. description below. Just a reminder, I sell plants only within Australia. Unfortunately, due to our quarantine rules and it being so strict, I cannot send overseas. I love you, but I can't do it. And soon i will be able to send poles and uh, pots overseas nice still working on gt so in a nutshell if you're in sydney definitely come to yeah. come book a spot at the greenhouse you can take a tour for yourself and shop all of these plants and get yep. some advice from aj at the same time That's if you're it. in australia you ship to australia so i do all the way around australia even the non-quarantine states they go through a concierge that i work closely with so we can send them everywhere beautiful and you ship plants but you also ship pots. the grow vertical po poles. poles pots and GTA. you have all of the ingredients that are used for Everything. aeroid mix as well so yeah. you are I one send stop all shop the light stuff all the light stuff you can order from me i do it in small batches so that you're not stuck with gigantic bags of mm -hmm. mixes and that way you can buy what you need at the time uh, and mix it yourself beautiful yeah. and if you're international you just need to stay a little bit patient but eventually it's happening i'm only one person guys uh, okay yeah <laughs> It'll happen soon enough. Okay. Thank you right. for coming. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Cute. It's so cute. It's Look at you.